Today's wedding web design, completing complex interactions using Webflow's Interactions 2.0. Let's jump into it. So today we're going to show you how to create a complex interaction using Webflow's Interactions 2.0. And if you haven't seen it, you should check out webflow.com forward slash IX2 so you can see a website that is completely created using Interaction 2.0. As you can see, scrolling down the site, different elements change upon scroll. And it's a really, really awesome. It kind of goes to the history of the internet. And as you can see here, different elements change as you scroll. It has some uh, scrolling from left to right that you can do uh, pretty amazing stuff but our question comes from the forum and it was a question about integrating code from code pen and the code pen in question was this here so as you can see uh, some of the elements change upon click and what I'm going to do for you today is show you how I completed this within Webflow so let's jump into it So first, I'm going to show you how the site was created in regards to the layout. So as you can see, the layout contains content section, content container, and then what holds all the elements within that is a content wrapper that is flex. And then these two content wrappers, they contain on the left side, the content header, description, and links, and on the right side, the images, additional description, and the background. And that's how we separated both of those. Now let's jump into the interaction. So as we saw, the interaction occurs on click. So once a user clicks on read more, the interaction occurs on the right side, the header slides over to the left. And then when you click on show images, it slides back and the interactions again continue on the right side. So let's look at our read more link. So I've created this interaction and we're going to just walk through some of the thought processes that I had. So first I had to make it my initial setup. What was my initial setup going to be? As you can see here, my initial setup was the show images link was going to be hidden on my initial setup. The product description on the right side was going to move down as well as the opacity go to zero. And the second product description was going to move down and the opacity to zero. On click, so as you can see here, 0.0, .0 on click, this is an on click situation. I want the show images to show and then the read more image to hide. So you can see here, this is grouped together and their start is with previous action, so they begin together. So then right after that, as you can see also here, zero, zero, I want the content header to move to the left, 16 view width port, and then I want it to also scale 0.7. Also on click, I want the plate to move down 10 pixels, opacity to zero, and then the second plate to stagger after that this is 0.1, stagger after that move down, and then opacity to zero. Then the background moves out of sight. Now let's talk about this situation here. So in order to do this, what I had to do is make this background let's see here. I can get to it, make this background color position absolute. So it's position absolute, fills the frame. And in order to do that, the wrapper itself had to have a overflow hidden and position relative. So then the background could move outside of that frame, move outside of that element. So let's go back to the interaction.
So then the background moves outside of the element. Next in this interaction, I want the product description that we initially had hidden to move up and then opacity to 100%. And then the second one to move up in opacity to 100%. And as you can see, these are also staggered. So the background first moves at 0.5, then the first product description moves at 0.6, and then the second one moves at 0.7. And then lastly, there's a transition here that occurs for this background color. So when you click on read more, the background color moves to the right. But when you click on show images, it comes from the left to the right. So in order for us to do that, I had to set up the show images link. So first I hide the background color here. So as you can see, it's hidden. And then I move this element negative 100%. So from the right side, all the way to the left side, outside of the element. So then we can then start the initial um, interaction when you click on show images, so that it moves from the left to the right. Let's look at the show images link. But before we do that, let's see how we're doing so far. All right, so when we click on read more, the read more link should go hidden, show images link should show, the cool plates header should then slide to the left, the plate should then fade down, the background to the right, and the description should fade in. Let's see what it looks like. There it is. All right, now let's look at our show images link. So this is our show image link. And let's see how we set this up. So this is 0, 0.00. So this is as soon as the user clicks. So as soon as the user clicks, I want the content to then move back to its initial position. This is the content header. I want it to also scale at that same time. I want the product description to move down, opacity to zero. Second one to move down and opacity to zero. I want the show image link to then go to hide, so display none. And I want the read more link to then display, so then we have it at a uh, at block, display block. Now we have our background image. We want our background image to then uh, go to display block, and then we want it to then move into place. So then it then moves into place at 0.5. The plate images then move right after that. And then the second one also moves right after that, opacity to 100% and move to zero, back to its initial position. So let's check this out. How does this look? So the first interaction slides over, second interaction slides back. And as you can see here on the cold pen, there's a, some slight jumpiness, a little jerkiness, and it's because of this scaling that's occurring here. But on ours, that doesn't occur. And that's because these elements here are position absolute. So then when it scales, uh, the other elements aren't trying to move around the scale. So that's why I have these elements here positioned absolute. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. We want to use Interactions 2.0 whenever we want to tell a more complete story. So the layout of your website is just the beginning of your story. The interactions, having elements follow the user as it scrolls down the page or elements interacting and changing as the user interacts with those elements, that's a more complete story and that's when we want to use Interactions 2.0. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Have a great one.